Tomorrow at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, Baylor will honor former running back, great NFL, also a high school star in the city of Waco, Alfred Anderson. Uh, the former running back will be honored in the uh, Lunch with a Legend series. Doug first told me, in fact, if you are still interested, want to go, it's tomorrow late morning at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Tickets are, at least a few, are still available. Alfred joins Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke. What does it mean to you, Alfred? I know you've been honored before, but to be a part of this event when they reached out to you. Hey, this is very special, David. I, uh, I went last year when Mike Singletary uh, did it, and I remember talking to Doug. Doug said, we need to get you. And I said, yeah, Doug, I, 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 I've been wanting to do this, so just let me know. And so uh, about two weeks ago, I get a call from John Morris. And so John asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, definitely. <laughs> it's a great honor. It's a great honor to be a, a Baylor legend and to be able to to share my story that people really don't know how I got to Baylor. <laughs> and so it should be a fun, a fun event tomorrow. Alfred, you grew up here in Waco. So, I mean, that, that was the first, you know, that was the closest school to you. How close did you come to going maybe somewhere else and not Baylor? I was a hundred percent going to U of H. Ooh. That's where I was going. Uh, you know, I was uh, uh, Coach Joman that came out and watched me play. I remember one Friday night he came. He came to John Tyler when we played uh, John Tyler, and they were ranked like number three in the state of Texas. And I look up in the stands, and there were Coach Joman and it, one of his assistant coach watching the game. And uh, they were really heavy recruiting me uh, to go to U of H. And plus, uh, uh, I can't recall the quarterback name at the time. He was a senior. And so they were looking for a quarterback to come in and take over. So so that's where I was going, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm going to guess the name, and, and this is from being able to remember that time period. Was it Danny Davis? Um, Danny, Danny Aud Davis, Audrey, had, Terry Elston, and Audrey McMillan, well, who's an East Texas boy from Carthage. Okay, yeah. And I played with Audrey. Uh, Elston was there. And then there was another one that, that played after Davis. Brent Chen uh, was on that roster. I'm going to have to look up another year. But they ran the Veer, yeah. Alfred. I can't imagine with what you were and how versatile you were that – you running something like that would have been just like glorious. Because that's what that's what we were running uh, in high school my senior year when, when Coach Tom Flood made me the starting quarterback, and so that's why Coach Yeoman uh, wanted me so bad because I ran that the same type of offense that U of H ran. Lionel Wilson. Oh, well, that yeah, a, that he, might. He had most. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, uh, yeah. The McMillan was still Elton. there, but uh, Lionel Wilson was also one of the quarterbacks that got a lot of snaps in 1981. What, what about Elston? Yeah, he, Elston. Yeah, Elston would have been there the year that you would have uh, in 1980. Yes, 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 yes. And he was yes. fantastic. He ran that offense incredibly well. And Bill Yeoman and company, they were rolling and had just had a great run early on in the Southwest Conference. So that's where you were locked in. What changed? That's where, I was, that's where I was locked in. What locked in was, and like I tell people and kids today, that sometimes you have to make important choices in your life. And that was one of the times I had to make a, a choice in my life. And what happened was I went on a visit, and uh, I remember two guys, came and picked me up from the hotel and they were ready to take me to Coach Yeoman. And when I got into the car, these guys were smoking marijuana and drinking drinking early in the morning. And I and right then and there I said, I can't come here. And that's the reason why I didn't go to U of H. Because I didn't want to be a part of that uh in that atmosphere, that social life. So that's that's what changed my life. To not my my to not go to 
U of H. And I, and I know all the years, Coach Yeoman always wanted to know why or what changed my mind to not to go to U of H. And, and, I, and I remember we was at a banquet, uh, one of the Baylor Hall of Fame banquets, and we were sitting at the same table. And I was telling myself, you know what, I'm going to tell Coach Yeoman the reason why I didn't go to U of H. And so um, he had got up. I thought he was getting up to go to the restroom and coming back. But when he got up, he and his wife was leaving. And so, man, I, I said to myself, I missed the opportunity to to let him know the, re- the, the main reason why I decided not to go to U of H. Mm. But that was the reason why I didn't go to U of H because – uh, what I experienced that that Saturday morning before I got ready to meet with him. So did you call Grant Taft? Did you call – who was it? Uh, and, and what was that conversation like? No. What happened was Coach Taft knew that I was 100% going to Houston. And so after my visit – Coach Staff came over to Richfield that Monday that Monday afternoon, and we we talked, and he asked me about my visit to Houston. I said, "Well, Coach, you know what? I don't think I'm going to Houston." I said, I'm "Thinking about I'm thinking about going to Baylor," and then uh, next thing you know, Coach get on the phone. Hey, Dave, Alfred. And so the next thing I know, I'm talking to Dave Campbell, and I'm telling, you know, Mr. Campbell, like, hey, I'm thinking about going to Baylor. I didn't say I was going. I said, I'm thinking about it. And before we get out the meeting, it was all over the, the wire. Alfred committed to Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave, Campbell's, Dave Campbell's power and the power of him writing anything at the time was probably at that time – more than anyone else in the state of Texas when it comes to that. I'm not so sure that that wasn't a plan. Hey, Dave, write about Alfred Anderson, and now he can't back out of us. That, and that's what happened. And so when I, when I heard that, I said, well, I guess I'm going to Baylor. <laughs> you know, um, I, I – I think a lot of people sometimes it's not that they forget about you, but that's why you're coming back. Well, what you did at Richfield high school, how awesome you were there. And then what you did at Baylor, but also had a hell of a run in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings, including being a part of an all rookie team. How was the transition from Baylor where they had a lot of players get entered the NFL in the coach tap years to Minnesota? How was that for you? It was, it was a great experience. I mean, Baylor ran, a, a type of pro atmosphere football program, and so when I uh, <clears throat> when I went to Minnesota, you know we were pretty much prepared, even though the, the terminology was different. I remember Coach Turner how he would explain our blocking scheme was okay. If the tackle was covered, man outside, you block the man outside, which is a three four defense, and then he said if the, if the if the tackle covered, no man outside, you block the man inside, which is a 4-3 defense. And so when I get to Minnesota, I said, man, this is what Coach Turner was teaching us, the 3-4 the, the, the and, and the 4-3 defense. But the way he explained it to us, so we, as running backs, we could get it. But that's how we had to understand if the tackle is covered, man outside, we block the Sam backer. If the tackle's covered, no sound backer outside, you block the sound inside, the butt, the backer inside. So, so yes, uh, Baylor prepared us for, for, uh, for the techniques and, and, and the terminology for the NFL. Alfred, what's it like to watch the running back position become what it, it sort of has these days of where – there's there's stars that are long lasting. It's few and far between to to see guys be those those mainstays of the position. It's just kind of in and out now at this point. Uh, turning it over every two or three years for a younger guy with fresher legs. Uh, what do you think of and, and not not a lot of guys, if if many, getting at all big contracts at that position. Uh, just how do you kind of take that and and how you sort of absorb that as a former running back in the pros yourself? You no know, things have changed. Like I said, over the last thirty. 
30 years since I played, uh, it's not like it was back then in the 80s and 70s and 60s where, you know, I, I can't understand how a running back can, you know, pick up 10, 15, 20 yards and then he tapping his helmet and like he wants to come out. That was something I would never do. Only way I would come out the game unless I was just, I was hurt or injured. I would never come off the field because I ran 15, 20, 30 yards to come off. Uh, you know, I want to play. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the difference between the players and this time. They don't they don't have the heart where they just want to play. Now, now that's one uh, player, uh, I'll I say, that does that want to be the, the work horse, the horse and, and run every play and without coming out. But, but, but the smaller running backs, all they want to do is come out, get one play, two plays, and come back in. But, but that's not how it was back then. Plus, they're making tons of money to just play half, half the games, you know, compared to us. We didn't make that much. Uh, my first year, I made $60,000, you know, and played the whole game. And didn't come off the field unless I was injured or hurt, you know. But that's the love of the game from the older players compared to the younger players in this day and time. Alfred, we've heard, and we have been at Super Bowls year after year after year when they started to uh, recognize the older veteran players who were not getting any benefits. Uh, Guys like Dick Butkus, uh, Mike Ditka, among others, were, were there to discuss that. Are you now or have you seen a change in what benefits you get now compared to maybe even 10 or 20 years ago or not? Yeah, they finally, finally, with the last uh, collective bargaining agreement, finally kind of helped us a little bit. Uh, They do provide uh, like a HRA plan for us. Uh, They also uh, start with – uh, we get like twenty five thousand dollars in in Baylor Hospital, where we have any need or any kind of uh, colonoscopy or whatever. Yep. That money every year they put twenty five thousand dollars in there to kind of help these guys help us to to pay for those things where we're not paying out of our pockets. Uh, also, in the lab, they did increase a little bit of our, our pensions. And I, and I want to say in 25, I believe they'll be going back to the bargaining table and hopefully uh, they can help get us some more because, and there's guys that played in the 60s, you know, those guys were making like $300 a month. How can you live off of $300 a month? Mm-hmm. You know, but, but it, they have improved a little bit to help us out now. And then we have the trust that also helps uh, provide things for us like uh, working out at the Y. Uh, also going to Tulane University where we can get a full body sc- screen of our bodies and brain and everything. The prostate is it's a full body checkout. So that way if something is going on with you, uh, they'll definitely be able to find it. That's awesome. And that's well overdue. I mean, these are some of the greatest names ever that were roaming up and down with all the radio stations. They were trying to get the word out and it worked. I mean, it took a while. Gene Upshaw, yeah. who was a former player and he was at the time, the NFL players association president, but he wasn't budget. And it, it was weird. Mm-hmm. First, he was making a lot of money being the uh, player agent or the player president. Yeah. But uh, yeah. eventually that did happen. The 1980 team, hell of a run, right? 10 and two. Uh, and then what yeah. was it? That was it Notre Dame that closed out the year in that uh, really low scoring, or was it Alabama that, in a game where they got Alabama. you in, in, the, in the Cotton Bowl? Yes, Alabama. Alabama beat us thirty to two. <laughs> 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 so, so that, but that was a run. That was a run. I want to say that's, that's the best. I mean, to to go undefeated in conference, be eight and zero. Hey, that was very impressive. That nobody. I think the closest team that was close to us was like three games behind us with with a loss, you know. But uh but that was impressive. And after that I was thinking, man, this is how it's gonna be for the yeah. next three more years. Yeah. <laughs> you got you were spoiled. 
Um, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, are you still working out in Tarrant County? I'm I'm retired. Okay. I'm retired, David. So I'm just enjoying life, and 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 my schedule is based around my 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 baby boy, uh, Alex, who's 12 years old. So picking them, taking them to school, picking them up, taking them to practices, and all that. So that's. That's my job right now. <laughs> well, that's a great job to have. You did work with the uh, Tarrant County Advocate Program with young yes. kids that were, they were sideways. They were struggling. They had made yes. some bad mistakes. What did you learn, and how much do you feel like you made a difference with them? I think with my group, a big difference. Uh, like I said, the first thing I do from, from the day, from day one, I give them rules. And if you give kids rules, those guys will buy by the rules compared to me uh, being an advocate for my, my kids compared to the different advocates who would let them get away with anything and everything. And then when they decide they want to tell them don't do this, it's too late because you already gave them so much leeway mm -hmm. to do what they want to do. But, but, but it, it has gave me, and I love kids and I always want, uh, kids to, to, to always be right and know that even though you messed up this time, you can change your life around. And that's, that's what was so important to me to help build these kids up. And, uh, you know, I would take my kids to my church and we would, you know, clean the church inside the church. And some of these kids never been inside a church, you know, so to be able to experience that, and, and do community service inside the church, you know. And then there was one that went back to school and started doing real well in school, you know, helping them get jobs and things like that and vouching for them. So, so that was uh, real, real dear to my heart to be able to help uh, the young men and the kids out there that make mistakes, that knowing that this is not the end, you can turn that around. Well, it's awesome that you did that. Was there a time in your life early on when you could have gone one way or the other and somebody was the right one to point you in the right direction? Uh, yes, I, I, yes. That, there was a coach that helped me, which I, the good thing, I, I was always a good kid, but sometimes as a kid, you always want to try to do something different just for the fun of it. And, and I thank God that uh, the experience I had with that, it definitely turned my life around to never do anything like that again. And uh, so, so yes, and you learn from those mistakes and, and those mistakes will make you better in life. You're a good one, Alfred. Thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow. The event is tomorrow. Starts at 1130 at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Lunch for the Legend featuring Alfred Anderson, Texas Sports Hall of Fame is right off I-35, right before you get to the uh, Brazos River, if you want to drop on in. I think there are still a handful of tickets available. I'm sure that you could walk in and get one if you want. But uh, good luck, Alfred. Enjoy tomorrow, and enjoy the attention, the questions, and the trip down memory lane again. Thank you, David. Appreciate Thank you. you guys. You too, Alfred Anderson. He uh, he was a hell of a player.